my furry worry worm. Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by today to see my new worry worm. I did this one with safety eyes so his head is three dimensional and I will show you how to make him a fuzzy worry worm. My furry worry worm. So let's get started. So I'm using a four millimeter hook even though this is a four weight yarn and they want me to use a five and a half. I'm using a four weight because I want tight stitches. So we're start out with the magic circle. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, I have a very brief, like probably two minute tutorial on how to do it the easy way. Just like that, all done, boom. So simple. All right, so in our magic circle, we are going to put in six single crochets. And I always like to ma mark my first stitch so it doesn't get lost or end up being too tight and I can't find it. So there's one. We want six. There's our six. We can pull our circle a little bit closed here. And now we're going to move on to the next round. We're going to do an increase all the way around. So in our marked stitch, we are going to put in two single crochets. I'm going to move my stitch marker and then work in that same stitch one more time. And then two, and we're going to do that all the way around. It's an increase up to 12 two single crochets in every stitch. And there's my last two, 11 and 12. Now we will increase one more time up to 18. So the way we do that is a single crochet. Move our stitch marker. So the first one is a single crochet. The second one is an increase, which means two single crochets. And that's the sequence all the way around single crochet in this stitch, two in the next stitch. Sequence all the way around. And there's my last two stitches. Now we're up to 18. And now that we're at 18, we are going to do four rounds of 18. No more increases. So there's our first stitch. Move my stitch marker. One single crochet in each one all the way around, four rows. And here's my last stitch of my four rounds of 18. So now I have four rounds, I have a little circle. So now we're going to start his tail. So we're going to chain 25, 24, and 25. So now we have most of his head and part of the tail. In each of our chains, you work in the back bumps if you want to, but it goes a lot faster if you don't, and it's really not necessary this time because we're making a curly cue. In each chain, we want five single crochets. There's the first chain one, in that same chain two, same chain three, same chain four, and five. Do that in every chain, all the way back up to, all the way back up to the head. Right, and here is my last chain. I'm going to put in five single crochets, three, four, and five. So now we have our curly cue at the bottom and we're just going to slip stitch into our marked stitch and now I'm going to take out my hook and I'm going to keep this so it doesn't start to unravel on me. 
Now we're going to do him's googly eyes. He's so cute. I just love him. Again, I was using a four millimeter hook. This is my furled ebony. Even though this is red heart and it wants a five and a half, I'm using a four because I wanted my stitches to be a little bit smaller. So now we want to add his eyes. So you really can do that anywhere you want to. I'm just going to pick a spot here. I have a big box of googly eyes. I think I will just use the little clear ones. So I have two googly eyes and two backs. They're not googly eyes, safety eyes. The googly eyes I used before because that project was flat. Since this one is three-dimensional and the sharp backs are gonna sh aren't going to be sticking out to hurt anybody. You don't want to hurt your fingers. So then you just choose your spot. Choose your place, wherever you want them to be. You want them close together, you want them far apart, doesn't matter. It's all your choice where you want him to be the eyes to be. And I think he's just adorable. So your little worm now has eyes, but we have to put the backs on. I'm assuming everybody who works with these knows how to do that. One and two. So you work on the right side of your fabric. This is the wrong side. This is the right side. And now we're going to go back to our working yarn. Pull this out a little bit. And now we are going to do a reduction to start closing his head and making it a little bit rounder. And we're working back around his head again. We are going to do a decrease down to 12 from our 18, which is the opposite of what we did before. So we'll do a single crochet and mark our stitch. And then single crochet two together. And single crochet, single crochet two together. All the way around. We have one more round there, and we're down to 12 stitches, and I want to stuff him, stuff his head, stuff it as full or as lightly as you want. So I'm just going to stuff his head a little bit. And we'll do one more, reduce, all the way around. So we're going to single crochet two together, all the way around. through one and through the next, go through everybody. Five, and one more reduce. Go through that stitch and that stitch, yarn over, pull through everybody. All right, now we are done with our hook because we're just going to cinch this closed and attach this more centered. I would cut off as much as you think you're going to need to be able to sew a little bit. I'm going to take off a nice little chunk and a needle and then we are going to slip through each one of these and just cinch those last six closed and just give it a nice little tug so he's closed. And now, because he's dangling over here a little bit, we just want to recenter his tail. So you do that basically any way you want, wherever you want it to be sitting. If you want it to be centered, center it. If you want it to be for, further over to one side, that's fine too. He's going to be cute no matter what. So I just do a few whip stitches, just a few.
All right, so I just stitched him together. I'm going to send him down a little bit, and we'll cut him off, and that shouldn't show anymore. And he's very secure. There he is. Isn't he adorable? And you can see that depending on the yarn you use, he gets a little bit bigger since they have still used a four millimeter hook on this guy too. But they're just so cute. And now we have safety eyes so we don't have to worry about the googly eyes falling off because the glue didn't stay. But we also don't have the pokey parts from the fasteners. So that's nice. And now if you want to know how to make him fuzzy, fuzzy wuzzy like this guy, he's my favorite. This is really easy. Anybody who has a pet, probably has a pet brush. This does not work on my dog. My dog is a collie. He does not work with these little tiny wire things. It doesn't work on his fur. So, what you, all you do is you take him. This one I've already fuzzed out. It doesn't take many, very much time at all. Just fuzz it out. Fuzz it out. However you want him to look. So he's my furry worry worm. So there's my new version with safety eyes because there's team safety eyes and there's team googly eyes but now I have designs for both and this guy is fuzzy. So there's two ways to make a three-dimensional worry worm. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and I'll see you real soon. Bye!